I sent you a little bit ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I was going to ask about it. I was going to. I, I wondered if it was always. Is if it, is it always mold that accumulates in those things by the time you change it, or is it just dust or a combination, or or can you? Uh, that's, a, that's a combination. Was that? It, it, that's a combination. Yeah, I saw it, and um, I had recently changed mine, so I was like, hmm, wonder if I. Had yeah. <clears throat> What that is, we learned years ago, the old, the old method of mold remediation was very laborious and tedious. And uh, somebody much smarter than me figured out that, uh, well, once you, once you do the demolition, tear out everything that needs to be torn out, you take a, an electric leaf blower and just blow out all the crevices and all the old cobwebs that you hadn't seen under the drywall and and just get all the original framing construction crap out of the way and um put it on the floor basically we just take a leaf blower and and blow the living crap out of every crevice and it's amazing what you got uh, i got two 30 gallon trash bags full of just dust and mold and dirt and filth and original construction and and uh yeah, you just do that for the bulk mold removal, and then now we're down to the tedious. Now we're back to vacuuming. The old method, they, they teach you to go in and you HEPA vacuum everything, and, and then you wipe everything, and then you HEPA vacuum everything again. Well, when you're getting chunks of, like, wood from the the boreholes of the electrician, you know, boring through a, a floor joist, yeah. you know, you get all those original construction debris, and man, we would just have to, you know, it would clog the vacuums and stuff like that. And then somebody, I don't, I don't know why it took somebody smart to figure it out. You'd think it'd be obvious, but it's like, huh, yeah, just blow it out and get, get the big crud out of the way. Now, now we're down to the microscopic vacuuming and cleaning. So always change the filter after we, you know, after we get down to the point where we're now down to doing the HEPA vacuuming, then we're not creating dust. We're just picking up mold particles and <clears throat> containing it in our vacuum while we're under negative pressure. And then, um, yeah, and then we're wiping down. Well, I just got done wiping down everything. And, and um, yeah, back to vacuuming. I'll be working every day this weekend. Work is good. Yeah. I like kind of sitting on my, on my rear, though. Oh, oh, is it working now? Hey, Mark. It is. Ooh. How you doing, oh, Mark? Oh, stupid bloody machine. <laughs> what happened? Oh, dude. I, 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 so I hit join the thing, and it goes, oh, you need the app. I go, okay, so I download the app. That's fine. Download the app. And I go, okay, so I hear Ruel. Oh, I can hear Lonnie. And then it's, um, so I want to say good morning. So I go, speak. And um, it says tap to speak. I go, okay, so I tap that, and it says, oh. You need to allow it to record. And I go, okay, so record. Oh, you need to turn this off. What? <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. So I'm, I managed to finally sort this little miserable life out, and I can talk to you. So I, I have actually heard and been following what's going on. So good morning. Good morning, Mark. It's uh, Saturday in your world, isn't it? It surely is. Saturday breakfast time, even better. Yeah, bacon and eggs with some coffee. Pretty much so. Bacon, bacon in the omelet with cheese and um, and coffee. Mm. Well, look, and, and I am really, really mm, I'm I'm really really sad because on Thursday night a tragedy that is. Look, I'm not sure if I can speak about it and not not get all emotional. So I may uh, you you may lose me. My coffee grinder broke. Oh. Oh, oh no. So, so this is the last cup of my ground coffee till my new coffee grinder arrives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, Mark, I want to get to New Zealand one of these days just to see you. Oh, that'd be cool. And, and, 
And then while I'm there, just so you know, I'm going to steal the Beecham street sign. Mm. That's about 10 minutes down the road from where I live. Cool. So if I ever get there, I'm going to create international controversy and, and uh, you know, get the UN on both of our cases. Mm-hmm. That'll be the one. Well, there's about two of them, so that's, that's fine. Cool. Well, folks that are tuning into the podcast, since uh, Ruel doesn't know how to segue, I'm going to try to segue into this. Uh, you have three friends that yeah. have met. Before you start, do you hear any of the, the noise that I have going on? I have like a gardener doing stuff. I heard a tank, but you know what? People that are podcast people, they, they understand. Cool. Um, okay, but yeah, well. friends, we, you, got three, you got three international friends in three time zones and two continents. And um, one is upside down, so he's a, he's in the future, but he will never give me his the 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 winning lottery ticket numbers. I I, don't, I thought we were friends, but we we're not allowed to give that information out. Uh, uh, must be in your uh, New Zealand uh, citizenship card or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you got you got Lonnie Beecham here in Jeff City, Missouri. I'm in Central Time Zone. You have Ruel Abadam on Pacific Coast, and he's in the Northern California area. And then we have Mark Thompson from uh, all the way down under in New Zealand. And I have no idea what time it is in your world, other than it's breakfast time, Saturday morning. We're recording Friday, July 25th in the afternoon in, in our world. So in my, How in you my doing, world, Mark? In, oh, I'm good. I'm excellent. Thank you. Look, in my world, it is 0724 on Saturday the 28th of whatever the month is, July. July? Every yep. day is the same whenever you're a, when you're a grown-up, isn't it? Yeah. Unless you're a teacher that gets summers off. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is the middle of winter. This is the middle of work season. And um, at the moment, we're having uh, New Zealand winter. So our season is the opposite to you guys. So ours is, ours is um, we're winter at the moment. It's um, rather wet. So, Mark, before we do the the full introduction and, and and the pre-scripted crap that Ruel emailed me that, you know, he says I have to say or whatever. I got to ask you one question. I've never asked you this, but is it true your toilet goes the opposite direction as, as ours when you flush it? Dude, don't be silly. The toilets go down. Um, I, I, I know I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the water in the sink. Yes. Yes. Ours, ours spins the opposite way. Gotcha. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, our, our toilets go go down, and our sinks spin the opposite way. So your toilet just goes straight down? Uh, no, it's a it's a different different flushing system. So um, our one, you imagine, so the water in our um, bowls is a lot lower than what it is in the states, and so our water doesn't swirl down. It just relies on the heat of pressure from the water coming in the top to flush everything through. Um, but if we had a system like the U.S. does, yes, ours would swirl the opposite direction. Well, hey, you know what? Before that, and that's why we have you on this call. It's not just three friends chatting. Uh, let me. Let, I'm going to read a script to you, Mark, and yep. uh, we're go- we're going to do a formal introduction. So uh, here we go. Here's my reading skills. Welcome to an edition of the Service Guys podcast. I'm your host, Lonnie Beecham and the service professional that you all know and love. Over the other mic is our podcast producer and, and a great friend of mine, Ruel Abadam. Ruel, please say hello, everybody in podcast land. Hello, everybody in podcast land. <laughs> you trying to imitate Mark now? No. <laughs> you you kind of sounded like mm-hmm. you were trying to have a New Zealand accent. No, my so, Mark, have, impersonate Mark, have you... Uh, have you had a chance to listen to the two or three podcasts that we've put out? Yeah, I have. They 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 sound, okay. they sound good. Okay, so now that we got the formal introduction out of the way, tell us <laughs> first back up, and then I want to hear more about your toilet flushing, and then I want to hear you know one of your crazy stories from work and stuff. But uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, your background, what you do, who you work for, um, that sort of thing. Okay, so I started my original working career um, 
and and the defence force. Uh, I wanted to work with aircraft, so um, I became uh, an aircraft finisher and spent a lot of time uh, stripping paint. Actually, so yes, I was a male stripper in the air force. Um, Wait, Mark, the, uh, hey? did you say paint stripping? Paint stripping, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that so sounds, we used sounds tedious. Paint. Sorry, what was that, Mommy? I said that sounds tedious, stripping paint. Uh, yeah, it was. The nice thing was though that everyone would leave you alone, so I got to spend plenty of time working on my own, listening to the radio. It was very pleasant. Um, but um, to be perfectly honest, while I really enjoyed the painting, I didn't like the chemicals. So I got out of that, went overseas for a couple of years, um, and then came back to New Zealand and retrained as a civil engineer. Um, so I, ah. I, don't, I don't have a degree. I have a certificate, so I'm a technical, um, sort of technical lens guy. Um, so straight after my last exam in 99, uh, I started working for a company called AWT. Now, they were a water company, um, and I got dropped straight into the rather interesting world of sewer rehabilitation. Um, and so for the past 20 years, what is it, 80, 18, so 19 years at the end of this year, I've been working in sewer rehabilitation uh, and uh, with pipes. And uh, so with storm, so, so I work with the three waters, potable water, um, storm water, and sewage. Uh, okay. Sort of my, my job is a, is, is, is a mixture of um, watching people do work on site. So doing quality control, making sure they're doing it safely, making sure they're doing the job right um, out on site. And the other half is uh, sort of an, analyzing the work to be done uh, on videos, that sort of thing. Um, I'm involved in training of CCTV operators, so how to how to take the pictures, how to do the work, how to give the um, information in a sensible manner. Uh, I do a lot of assessment on pipes, so uh, councils will come to me and say, "Hey, we, we think our pipes are stuffed. Tell me you have a look, and I'll and I'll give them a go, go through, give them the grading, and say, "Hey, look, this one you need to do some work right now. This one you need to do some work in about five years, or this one, hey, it's got 20 years life in it. Don't bother." Um, so I do that. The last week, excuse me, I have just spent um, a week of about four of them wandering around a little settlement in the north end of um, New Zealand called Hikarangi. Uh, and Hikarangi in New Zealand is a fairly old place. It would be close to 100 years old, some of the properties. Um, and they have a problem with... Oh, wow. Into their, into their, yeah, it's like 100 years old. Anything over 100 years in New Zealand is ancient. Um, we're mm. a really young um, so spent spent um, uh, the week inspecting 200 of uh, about 600 properties, uh, looking at their external drainage features and grading those. Going, yep, in a rainstorm, that's going to get water in it, or no, that's a piece of art. It's beautiful. Leave it alone. So that's that's sort of sort of what I do. Um, I'm really interested in clean water. I'm interested in keeping stormwater out of the sewer, and I'm interested in keeping sewer out of everything else except for the sewer. Um, and I so, Mark, so I can, can I, long walks can I the interrupt beach. you? Mark, yeah. can I interrupt you real fast? Yep. What's the problem with putting stormwater in the sewage system? Okay, so quickly, it depends on the design. Some sewer systems are designed to take stormwater and wastewater at the same time. In that case, it's not a problem. The majority of them are designed to take wastewater or stormwater, not both. So with stormwater, as soon as it gets into the sewer, it's contaminated, got to treat it as sewer. So you imagine, um, say somebody has one of their house downpipes discharging into the sewer. That's the equivalent of somebody flushing the chain on their toilet every 10 seconds or so in a more reasonable rain shower, right? So now all of a sudden, you imagine that over an entire city, you overcharge your sewer system and you get sewer overflows. So ah. you wander down to your nice pristine beach that's in beautiful condition. And contrary to popular belief, they are not sea cucumbers on the beach. Those are grogans and turds. So you end up with- Bro what? Say that again and slow. Grogans and turds. Huh. I so, have no idea what either one of those are. So to put, to put it in layman's terms. It's on your beach. Okay. That I, uh, I understand. That, that you understand? Or 
uh, if you're a private property owner, your private pro your sewage may over a surcharge as well, and it will come out your gully trap if you're lucky. If not, they will have to meet you to come and clean it up. Gotcha. And that's why you and I are kind of connecting because that's exactly right. you, you deal with the more, from my understanding, more of the underground buried lines, right? That, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And then in my world. Oh, you've gone. Yeah, he dropped. Oh, Lonnie. Okay. Hey, Ruel. How are you? I'm good. Um, um, all right. He's back. I'm here. He's back. Well, well, We'll pretend he's not back, and I'll just interject because, you know, I'm the producer here. So I, I have a responsibility to read some sort of formal definition of a grogan, and this is from the legitimate Urban Dictionary. A grogan yep. is a partially ejected clump of feces, half a loaf, also an ejected clump of feces that is not heavy enough to drop off your dingleberry forest. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we go, Grogan. Yep, yep, yep. Grogan. Okay. So, so I what I was saying uh, when I, where I lost you is I totally track what you're saying. Once, um, you know, like so storm water hits sewer pipes, it's treated and considered sewage and contaminated. Yep. We all know what that means. Uh, yep. Same, same in my world. Whenever even something, even when water that's clear that doesn't stink, that doesn't have toilet paper. In my world, we call it brown trout. That's also known as feces or sewage or whatever. Um, even though any, any water that comes up through your floor drain, be it in the garage or the, or the shower or where have you, it's that water is still considered treated the same as sewage. Yep, most definitely. Because of, uh, you know, even though it might not stink, it might not have any odor, might not have any look, might not have anything that looks harmful. It is treated as harmful because of all the E. coli and uh, all the bloodborne pathogens and, 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 and those sort of things. You, you, I'm assuming you understand bloodborne pathogen, right? Bloodborne pathogen? I would call that things like hepatitis C, tetanus, right. A, uh, just, yep. yeah. It's it's a whole lot of nasty stuff that right. you don't want in your house or anywhere else actually, except for in the sewer. So your job is to keep it out of the house, and my job is to sanitize it to the point where it's safe for kids and families to walk around in if it gets back backed up into your house, right? Yep, exactly. Gotcha. All right. So you're above you're below ground, I'm above ground, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. All right. So just, just trying to clarify for listeners, make sure everyone understands. But so, go, so go ahead. I, I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'm trying to remember where I was. Um, so, um, the, and the other problem, so I'm just talking about, so we call that inflow when, when stormwater gets where it shouldn't. The other problem is the majority of the sewer systems um, around the world operate on gravity, right? So everything flows downhill until it gets to a really low point, then they pump it back up again. So all of a sudden, your pumps are working. So you pay money to move the sewer, the sewage, right? Right. Because you've got to run the pumps. Um, when, I, when I started on my, on my work, the area I was working was called Devonport in Auckland. And there are six pump stations between Devonport and the main um, treatment area. So that's six times you now need to pump this contaminated stormwater. So that costs you however many dollars in electricity. Then your sewer plant is designed to um, receive sewage from, say, let's say 100,000 houses. When it's raining like that and they're all leaking and contributing, all of a sudden you've got the sewage coming in from 200,000 houses. What do you think happens? Oh, wow. To so you, you, and then you've got a couple of options. You can um, stop the inflow getting in there. You can make your pipes bigger and create storage, or you can build storage in the system so that your um, big flow gets stored and then comes out at a slower rate that the sewer plant can handle it. Or you can build a bigger sewer plant. As you can tell, all of those are really expensive options. So generally, people will go for what they call rehabilitation, where they will fix the pipes and fix the inflow problems. 
Um, and because that's that gives you generally more bang for your buck than paying, oh, I don't know, $20, $30 million to upgrade your sewer plant. And Mark, yep. can I, Mark, can I, can I interrupt you one more time? Yep. You're, you're talking $20 million. And uh, for our listeners that didn't catch on, you're in New Zealand. How does the American dollar and the New Zealand dollar kind of track i mean are they close to the same no i think i think we get uh, ours is worth less than yours i think uh you would get about a dollar 50 for your american dollar so okay yeah if if i was sorry if i was to buy an american dollar it would cost me a dollar 50 of my money okay okay so 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 you you guys you guys come over here and stuff's cheap right Okay. All right. So, sorry, back to your story. So either 20 million to build a new plant or, you know, more bang for your buck to keep the, the inflow from coming into the system, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so for 20 million, so for the same amount of money spent on sewer rehabilitation, you could rehabilitate. Um, I'm just trying to think what I've signed off. That's, I mean, that's around about eight or 10 years worth of uh, physical works. That's a, no, that's a lot of meters. Um, let me see. A small town would probably have uh, 10 miles worth of uh, wastewater system. And oh, wow. you, would easily, you would easily get that rehabilitated for less than 20 minutes. So to give you an idea, gotcha. the city of Auckland has uh, 80,000, 80,000, sorry, eight. Oh. It's a really big number of kilometers. So um, I'm just trying to think. What have we got? 80,000 kilometers of pipe, which is about. And guys, while Mark is doing math on that, the math on the, the money part, uh, according to Google, a million dollars of New Zealand uh, dough is uh, 679,581 in US. Yeah, that'd be right. Oh, wow. So, so okay. to give you to, to, to give you an idea, the average house price in Auckland, where I live, is a million dollars. So, if you want to come over here and buy a three-bedroom house, it would cost you six hundred thousand US. Oh wow, that's pretty high, even by my mid, mid uh, midwestern standards. I I know. I've been looking at some of the prices in the states and going, screw this, I'm moving there. I can't I can't buy in Auckland. Mark was trying to be your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I could I could come and live somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Where's Where's there somewhere in the states that it's always warm and doesn't have storms? Um, it's the area between my scrotum and my thigh. What's the real estate like? <laughs> it's still pretty humid, though. I'll have to get yeah. an appraiser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've I've decided I don't do cold. Is just forget that. So, uh, all right. So, Mark, I I would love to have like a twelve hour podcast with you. What is cold to you down under? What What does that mean? And you're going to tell me. Never mind. I won't know what parent or uh, Celsius means. No, that that's okay. So, cold. We uh, in Auckland where I am. We're subtropical. So, what it means is we get the occasional frost. <laughs> So I could count the number of frosts on my hand for a year, um, but the temperature, so it's cold enough, it's cold and wet. So it is cold enough to be unpleasant, not cold enough to do anything with. So we don't get snow, we get the occasional frost. It's probably very similar, uh, Ruel, to San Fran or maybe Seattle. In its weather. So no snow, occasional frost, and so that that means you 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 can go outside and run or bike or whatever in just some warm gear. You're not looking at sub zero freezing temperatures. That's yep, yep, that's right. So I can be I can be out. The the, the weather is um wind wind, rain, mud, um and and damp in um in, in winter. In the in the summer it's uh humid and dry. Uh 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Humid and dry, that's an oxymoron. What, what does that mean? So, so it's it's humid and doesn't rain. So when I say when I say when I say dry, I mean not raining. <laughs> okay. So Mark, so, let me geek on you just a minute. Do you, you probably do not track um, with psychrometrics and the uh, and and you know, grains per pound and stuff like that in, in the water world, do you? You're, you're talking about flowing water, right? Yeah. I, you're I not don't, talking I don't, about water vapors and vapor pressures and, 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 and the science side of the gaseous forms of water, right? No, no. I'm, I'm solely concerned with the, the liquid flowing form. Liquid. Okay. All right. Now, for uh, 20 million New Zealand dollars. Do you know what the term sublimation means? Sorry, sub, sub sublimation. sublimation. Yes, to, to, I, I do. I do in terms of um, something. So you will get something like dry ice that goes from a solid to a exactly. gas. Exactly. Ding, 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 ding. Checks in the mail. Boom. Ah, 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 Nicely ah. done. I, I was yeah. just seeing if you paid attention in uh, physical science class. That, and that's something that, that I deal with. I will blast homes for certain needs with dry eyes. And, right. uh, and it, and it oh, supplements. Yeah. It goes from a solid to, to, a, a, to a gas immediately, like dry yeah. ice. And that's actually what I use is dry ice to uh, blast homes for mold remediation, uh, fire damage. Kind of depends on the, the application, but that's very pricey. So, 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 right. will that, will that do do things like remove um, um, smoke, odor, sort of surface damage without damaging wood or paint? Uh, well, it takes a top surface layer off. So, like, yep. um, well, all right. So it kind of depends. Like in my my old days when I did fire damage, we would dry ice blast in in an attic in July or August because we would die <laughs> if we were <laughs> up there soda blast you know baking soda blasting or hand cleaning stuff we we could uh you know when negative what negative 120 degrees we would literally suit up with like warm sub you know and we would still be freezing in the middle of august and my august july and august uh mark i don't know how to translate this to um to celsius but uh you know we, we we're between 90 to 110 degrees outside so, with so that's, uh, that's 40 60 to uh, what's that around 40 degrees celsius that's what that's what we call stupid hot well right and and then then in the midwest we have the humidity factor so we can be 60 to 95 percent humidity outside and so you mix all that and and guys can literally work in in the attic cleaning or fire or soot removal or whatever we're doing for about maybe maybe 10 minutes because in, yeah. in our attics we're at 150 180 degrees it's and hot. it's just as humid and it's hot yes so hot. and it's then, great you're a lady but bad if you're in the jungle exactly so <laughs> so we would we would use dry ice in, in uh certain situations if if uh it wasn't practical to uh go in and clean clean all the trusses and all you know the the the, the roof framing stuff we we would go in and dry ice blast and then we would have a product that just left or just soot whatever was left and uh we wouldn't have to clean up soot and baking soda and you know whatever other chemicals we might have used so anyway so that sounds like some very cool technology i used to use um what was called a plastic media blaster so like a it would be very similar to your dry ice blaster uh except it uses plastic media for for removing for paint stripping um and that was dusty as it was a fantastic system but if you didn't want dust on anything forget it you know exactly you know what people don't realize and i we probably need to find a media blaster person but there are there are so many different media blasting i mean walnut shells corn cob husk uh, yeah baking soda, dry ice, glass, sand. I mean, there's just tons of different ways to blast and they all have their, their, their use. Yeah. They all yeah. have, you know, it's a tool in the arsenal. So, 
So anyway, we got sidetracked. I, I, I now owe you 20 million New Zealand dollars. <laughs> it, it made total sense to me, guys. All of that, you know, all that geeky. Uh, <laughs> this is this is us. This is this is the bit where you smile and nod a lot, Ruel, because you speak computers and I sort of glaze over. I go, ah, yeah, okay. I smile and nod a lot. <laughs> Very cool. Where's so, gone? so Mark, Ugly. yeah. Um, so we've learned a little, a little bit about New Zealand. Your dollar, your weather. You deal with uh, both potable storm water and sewage water. That's right. Um, and I and I've cut you off a time or two, but um, so the premise of our show is kind of getting service guys that that are behind the scenes that you may or may not see. You tend to be more of a guy people don't see. Um, people people can tell when you're not doing your job when the water's coming up through their floor drain or, um, you know, the trucks are out in the street and you're pumping and, and sucking sewage out of places that doesn't belong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you've been doing this 18, 19 years. How, what, what's, what's one of the craziest, unbelievable, you can't believe somebody asked you this question, you know, asked you to do this or, or what, what's, what's, what's a crazy story in your world? What, what, what's that look like for you? So I, I deal with a lot of lining companies. So one of the, there's a few ways you can fix the pipe. You can put a new pipe in, you can, um, and, and there's, lo- there's lots of different techniques. Our, our company specializes in being knowledgeable what's, about what's called trenchless technology. So trenchless technology doesn't mean you don't dig holes. What it means is that you do the work with only small holes. So it's really laparoscopic surgery on the sewers. Um, nice, ways to nice. Do. Yeah, it's very good. Um, I can install a pipe, under, uh, re- fix a, a pipe underneath the house without digging up anything, just all access. Essence. You could, Now, do you call your the, the hole that you get into to access the drainage, do you call them manholes or access shafts? What do you call those? Uh our, we, we call them manholes, and they're in the middle of our street. So every house kind of points towards the middle of the road. Okay. okay. So uh, uh, there wasn't enough thought put into our sewer designs, and the sewers may be in the middle of the road. They may be in the back of a property. Um, they are all over the show. Uh, well, now, but, in, our, in our world, Mark, Mark. Yeah. In our world, if the if – the, <coughs> excuse me – if the um, if the sewer lines go towards the back of the house, that's more of a, a lagoon system with grinder pumps and uh, and that sort of thing. If they go in the back, and that's in the more uh, you know remote area, not remote, uh, rural area. Yeah. yeah. So, but so if you're a- if you're in city limits, you're on a city sewer. If you're yeah. basically out in the country, you're you're on a lagoon, and you're you know but what do they say you know, you know everything rolls everything rolls downhill. Yeah, and that's and that's actually a lot of the reason for it in New Zealand. We're a very um, or well, certainly Auckland. It's a very hilly place, and you know a lot of houses are down below the road. So um, that, that's why the sewers are there. But um, so we deal with a lot of lining systems um, and one of them is called cured in place pipe or CIPP and what that is is a uh, flexible pipe so you imagine a tube of fiberglass that gets um, put in your, your uh, sewer and inflated and there's a couple of different ways you can cure it um, and they will do uh, four inch pipes up to the biggest one I've seen installed was uh, 1200, which is, um, uh, what's a yard? 36 inches? Uh, a yard is, yeah, thir- yeah, you're, you're okay. correct. So, 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 so you understand seconds. our world better than we understand your world. Uh-huh. That's pathetic. Yeah. You know, the working on aircraft bit, we, we worked in um, Imperial measures on the aircraft, so I got to learn those. So, so that's, that's a, I've, I've seen one done in a 36 inch pipe, and they do a bit bigger. They'll do up to, 42, maybe 50 inches. 
Um, but there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of ways of curing them. Um, and we had uh, recently, we had a, a company uh, come in with uh, a UV cure system. So, you know, you go to the dentist and he puts the stuff on your teeth and he shines a little light in there. That's a UV right, right. cure. And so they use exactly the same system for this liner. So what they do is they pull the, pull the liner into place, they inflate it with some air, and then they have this big, long snake of UV lights that trundles off down. Okay, cool, pretty simple. It's really quick, really efficient. So this company comes in. We've worked with them on um, other projects, but this is the first time they've installed this system for us. Um, so, I'm, so I'm there because it's the first UV liner I've seen installed. The principles are all the same for CIPP, so I'm sitting there watching it. And uh, so they're away. They put the liner in place, and there's a few dodgy things they do that I'm sitting there going, talk to them about that. Um, so this is the this stuff. Is, when you watch people work, you get to observe them pretty well, and you get to know um, whether someone's really familiar with what they're doing or whether they are floundering a bit. Now, these guys were moving heavy stuff, they were sticking their hands in places they shouldn't, like in front of pinch points. They were trying to manhandle this piece of pipe that weighed, uh, let's see, 200 pounds a meter. Um, and I'm just sitting there going, oh, wow. Hang on. This just, okay, there's signs of, that, that, you know, it, yes, you're getting the job done, but there's a couple of things I'm going to talk to you about afterwards. So anyway, they get the liner in place. They cut the ends off. And what they have to do to get the pressure inside it is install some metal inserts either end of the liner. So a guy's down in their manhole installing the first liner. And all of a sudden I hear the voices going, hey, hey, stop, oi, oi, oi. When you're working on a site like that, that's always a bad sign. So I'm sitting there going, right, okay. Right, right. No matter what on. language you speak. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, actually, I work with a lot of guys from the Middle East. and you can, you can, yeah, It doesn't matter if I can't understand what they're going. I know what's happening. Um, right. The guy comes out and he goes, we've lost the liner. And I'm going, now normally when someone with COPP says they've lost the liner, what it means is um, that it's it's cracked or it's split or it's become contaminated or for whatever reason um, they can't cure it and or, or the curing is only partial. And I said, what do you mean lost the liner? He says, oh, it's gone. I go, what do you mean gone? He said, oh, no gone yeah the whole so this thing was um 750 mil uh this was about uh hang on it's about 24 inch a 24 inch line uh and it was 80 meters long which is close to 80 yards um the whole line so what had happened is a plug upstream had gone released a whole lot of uh, water down the pipe and had washed the entire liner out down past the downstream manhole. So when he said lost the liner, what he means is it's flowed off down the stormwater line out of the two manholes. I'm going, well, where is it? I don't know. Well, go find it. Um, so this is, is, is a a liner, and it's worth uh, most of my year's wage. <laughs> right, um, right. And this thing has just disappeared down the pipe. Uh, okay, can you go get it? So, yes, yes, they, they found it a couple of man, the manholes down, but um, they've had to get a new one special from Germany. Let's just say they lost their profit on that job. Yeah, no kidding. So, so what what ended up happening? Did it flood somebody's basement? What 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 happened? No, no, no nothing. The, the the we as far as overall effect, we got off pretty lightly. They have to buy a new liner and redo it. Um, so that's that's cost them a pretty penny and hasn't really given them a lot of um, credibility in the industry, which is it was a little sad for them. But uh, they they're learning this game and. Um, it's a really Ooh. special, you know, it takes it takes you 10 years to learn how to do it. Um, so there's not many companies that do it. Um, and they're new to the business? Yeah, they're new to the lining, relatively new to the lining business. Um, they've got, Ooh. it's a case of as a company, they've got the ability, but they really need to get some good runs on the board before they'll be taken, you know, uh, a lot more seriously by the industry. Um, and, and stuff like this, they, they got off pretty lightly. They were able to recover the liner. 
there was no so the liner is full of um has a lot of styrene in it which is uh, a really nasty contaminant you don't want in your stormwater they managed right. to recover by contaminating the stormwater um which was was great we have a lot of um native fish in New Zealand that uh, the council loves and is very sensitive about, and, and rightly so. And the styrene will cool them off pretty quick. So, you know, they, they got away. They, they dodged a bullet, but it's going to cost them plenty. Um, wow. And it's totally fine that you're talking about this on a podcast, right? Yeah, I've, I've not mentioned any names to protect the um, <coughs> guilty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So... so it's it's public it's public knowledge what what happened in the industry. Um, they've they've certainly received the information back from uh, other parties that they hadn't spoken to. So yeah, it's 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 well known. Um, I I I've generally so so most of my most of my work stories that that are that are shake my head stories involve people doing dumb stuff uh, regarding <laughs> health. Um, yeah, you know people. I, so I I do a lot of health and safety checks. And people say, oh, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't let someone, someone know you're doing a health and safety check. Just, you know, stand behind and watch them. I go, no, no, people will do dumb stuff when you are standing straight in front of them. You know, they, they will right. jump down holes without any protection. They will get in excavations that are too deep. Um, and they will do it while you are standing there straight in front of you. You don't need to be sneaky and sneak around. Um, yeah, right. You can only imagine what they do when nobody's looking, though. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, if you will do that when I'm standing here. And for me in my job, if I see somebody compromising health and safety, I know for a fact that they are going to be pretty average on quality at best. And my other right. option is if yeah, their quality is average, their health and safety is going to be pretty poor as well. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, All right. yes. What kind of – what? kind of tip i know we're on two different ends of the world but what what kind of tip can you leave our listeners with regarding either potable for for the dummies that means drinkable water yeah uh storm water or the uh sewage water what 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 kind of tip can you leave with maintain your drains yeah and how does what's that look like Okay, what does that look like? So your drainage, your plumbing and drainage is generally out of sight, out of mind. The only right. time you know there's a problem is if there's an overflow. And I guarantee that most people have got no idea where their drainage pipes go, have no idea what they're made of, and have no idea what their, um, what, you know, how operable they are. Um, I, tell, I, I get people telling me that fat blocks sewers. And my answer to that is bullshit, does not. Roots get into the sewer and collect the fat and allow it to block, or dips in your sewer, allow the fat to congeal and allow it to block. But if your pipe, your sewer pipes are running correctly, the fat won't block it. So get in, clear the roots out. If you've got dips in the pipe, get someone in to dig them up and fix them. If you've got old leaky pipes, I recommend you replace them. Um, Oh, by the way, fat will block a gully trap and it will block a U, a U pipe under a sink. So don't put fat down the drains either. Um, so main, maintain your drains. The problem with it is that, to be honest, it's going to cost you, let's say you replace your entire drainage system, it'll probably cost you five to 10,000 US dollars, depending on, um, on, on what you do. But hey, you only need to do that once every 50 years and to be perfectly honest they should last 100 years with modern materials the problem is drains aren't sexy no one ever comes to your house and goes wow check out that plumbing Whoa, i like your drainage unless they're really sad people like me when i'm commenting on people's gully trap when i'm walking around houses um maintain your drains you i know you can't see them you don't you don't get anything back for them no you're not going to improve the value on your house but hey, uh, and the other problem is, if you maintain your drains, you may not get to meet Lonnie. So you can edit that out if you really want, Lonnie, because this is really going to, if people maintain their drains, this is going to stop you doing work. But hey, just like people do dumb stuff while I'm standing there in front of them, people won't maintain their drains either. So I think you're pretty safe. Excellent. Um, just got a word that <clears throat> you might have lost Lonnie again. So uh, he's going to try to finish back on. Uh, Hello? Hey, Lonnie. 
What, what just happened? Um, <laughs> it must have been a, a call bump. Oh, there it goes again. Um, lovely. Yeah. Okay, so, so Ruel, maintain your drains. You know, just like, just like you go and get a health check, maintain your drains. So, hey, since I got an expert civil engineer on the line, what's your thought on, uh, uh, in my world, we call it uh, Drano. It's, it's a basically, uh, chemically, it's mostly lye. Yeah, um, it's, it's not going to do a thing on the sewer. It's not going to touch it. Um, Drano is fantastic for uh, unblocking sort of plumbing drainage probably mostly in the U-bends. Um, once it's in the sewer, gravity sewers run a little bit full. They don't run full full. So if you've got a blockage, it's not gonna do not going to do a thing. To clear a blockage, if it's a root blockage, you need to get a jetter in there or a cutter to cut them out. If it's a fat blockage, you need to get a high pressure water jetter in there. Um, and it's, it's specialist equipment and it's specialist work. Uh, right. But yeah, chem chemicals dump down the line. You can put root killer down there, really doesn't do much. You can foam them, doesn't do much. They'll be back. Um, right. Drano, they laugh at Drano. They go, ha, 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 ha. This is nothing. I, I do too. If I know, if a customer tells me they use a lot of Drano, then I, I know that it's uh, going to eat the pipes like a cancer from the inside out, and they will have a massive sewer line problem down the road i don't know if it's going to happen this year or 10 years from now well especially if you've got if you've got concrete pipes acid eats concrete pipes guess what drano is oh hang exactly. on exactly yeah but yeah it's bad on it's bad on oh uh, wait 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 no, Mark. It's, caustic. it's caustic not acid yeah i was gonna say yeah it's it's mostly al alkalinic it's like 14 alkalinic. isn't it yeah. yeah no no you're right you're right yeah yeah no, that's gonna that's gonna ruin plastic, but it's not gonna touch uh, ceramic or cement. And and it also ruins uh, cast iron and. Um, yep, it'll it'll I chew can't... cast iron out like there's no tomorrow. Mhm. Mm yep, and you can see it. And I've seen a lot of customers in their basements that they, they have exposed sewage lines and and an unfinished portion, and they'll say, "What is that?" And they start wanting to touch it. I'm like, "No, no, no, no! Don't touch it! Don't touch it! Get it cut yep. out and replaced." Yeah, so so yeah. that's like the place you had the other day where the sewer was underneath the um, plastic. That was you, mm. you were telling me cast iron. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know we had a little glitch with the technology, and hopefully uh, the producer Ruel can fix this all together. But I I think this might be a pretty decent show. I think it's fantastic. Uh, thank you, you Ruel. And, yeah. and and just so uh, my local listeners know. When you, whenever you see me in the winter time wearing a bright orange beanie cap that has my blue lettering stenciled in or uh, embroidered into it, Mark Thompson's wife actually hand knits my my beanies uh, wow. for me to wear and keep keep my ears warm and my bald head warm. So um, it only yep. takes a month just for anybody to know. Mark, uh, if you want to plug your wife. Um, you know, if if anybody wants some hand hand knitted virgin New Zealand wool, um, they can go to Mark's wife's website and they'll do it. She'll do it for them. But uh, just so you know, so, it takes what was it a month last time that I, 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 was, I know most sorry. most most of that's the most of that's the shipping. The pigeon was flying really slow. Um, yeah, I was like I wasn't I wasn't nervous or scared, but I, I, well, I was I wasn't scared, but I was a little nervous. I'm like. Uh, where's this at? <laughs> you know, it was like four to six weeks or something. <laughs> so if, if people want to have a look at um, the beautiful things she does and, and her knitting is art, um, have a look at Not Moira. That's K-N-O-T and then new word M-O-I-R-A on Facebook. And um, There you go. Two years. Uh, apparently there's been nothing put up for two years. She's She's... She needs to give me some more photos, and I'll I'll put them up. So, it's it's a it's it's me that'll be talking to you mainly on the on the page, but um, yeah. So not Moira, if you if you're keen, and and yes, we we do do custom beanies and stuff like that. Right, and, and as a as a Midwestern boy, I can tell you that I have paid Mark online 
uh, a few times for a few beanies and and um yeah it works it works flawlessly especially if the male can keep up yeah that's right so most most things actually don't normally take a month i was a bit appalled at that <laughs> normally right. good for getting a package over there well folks my day is starting to I need to I need to switch gears and actually go back to work a little bit. Okay. Mark, it's it's awesome catching up with you and and talking learning more about your day to day professional life. And I'm glad that the, the company was the, was able to retrieve that liner before it flooded somebody's home and blocked up something that didn't need to be blocked up. Yeah, exactly. Would you like to Would you like to have uh, the last word? Um. I'm not quite too sure what to say. If anyone's interested in a little bit more of what I do, have a look at www.projectmax, all one word, projectmax.co.nz. Um, and you may even see my pretty smiley face there. I'm the one with the curly moustache and no hair. And uh, for people that don't know Mark and what he looks like, I guarantee you once you see him, you, you could pick him out of a lineup immediately. Bald head, <laughs> smooth, smooth bald head, and a handlebar mustache that is always on point. Actually, my girls are telling me the, the terminology is fleek now. Is what, sorry? Fleek. You're on fleek, Mark. On fleek. Oh, there we go. Fleek. I'm up with the, I'm up with the kids. I'm on fleek. On fleek. Right. Yes. Okay. So whatever you do, Mark, I, I, I know your uh, background and, and stuff, but whatever you do, do, do not create uh, – do not um, – how do I say this? Do not do a heinous crime because you're going to be picked out of the lineup immediately. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. I'm just, I'm just too noticeable. <laughs> Imagine me in a bright orange minivan. Everybody yeah. sees me. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. All right, um, Lonnie. Before we start to really get towards the wrap up, um, mention again because you mentioned your for your local customers what. Uh, what your business is and what would you specialize in real quick? Uh, this is Lonnie Beecham, the owner of Restore it Restoration. And you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and I think Instagram now. Yep. My website is restore-it-restoration.com. You're hired. And uh, yeah, Ruel really didn't get fired last time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a relief. Uh, I was disturbed about that. <laughs> he knew I was joking. So, uh, it, and what I deal, what I specialize in, are is everything that's uh, water related, be it uh, cleaning carpet, cleaning ceramic tile, mold remediation, and I uh, rise and shine at at water damage restoration and mold prevention. So, that's Fantastic. that's what I do. Um, sort of the. The, the little small touch points uh, that I took away from this episode was uh, the term the term Grogan and uh, something that I haven't heard in a while, brown trout. Yeah, Mark, that's the only thing we got out of this. <laughs> Grogan. Yeah, excellent. Grogan. That's everything else. You, we can just delete it all. Just throw Grogan out there, and we're good. Yep. That, that, yep. that was just me. That was just me. Anyways, it's um, the world one podcast at a time. So if uh, the listeners find val found value in the Service Guys podcast, please share it with people you know. We would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts, rate us, review us, and also leave comments. We would love to see your comments, and we'd read it on the show. Service Guys podcast is online on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as Service Guys Pod. And um, and as we out, yeah, and and. Five star reviews are, are critical. I don't care if you say I don't ever want to go to New Zealand or I don't understand a word that Mark Thompson just said. Just leave us a five star review. That's right, because five stars are the best. Yeah, we're Americans, Mark. We don't we don't mess around with yeah, three or four stars. It's five. Five stars. Yep. On on behalf of our, our special international and first guest, Mark Thompson. <laughs> In, you, in New Zealand, I want to thank Ruel for uh, putting this together and recording everything. I want to thank Mark Thompson for taking time out of his morning breakfast on Saturday. Uh, I guess it's July 26th your, in your world. And um, thank you guys for listening. Let us know what you think and leave a five-star review. 
He's Lonnie Beecham from Restart Restoration, Jefferson City, Missouri, and he likes to say, get your life back to normal. Get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It, Restoration.